Final Exam, an Avatar The Last Airbender fan fiction, Chapter 4. As the rail of the wooden trainer ship dipped unexpectedly towards the choppy surface of the ocean, Shiori started to have second thoughts about the arrangement Master Zorin had set up. Well, it was probably third or fourth thoughts by now. Her white-knuckled grip on the rail slackened only as the boat straightened, only to tighten again as the opposite side of the ship dipped down. Headmaster Zorn, a more experienced traveler by far, had taken refuge from the choppy seas below deck. Shiori considered following him, but decided that she'd rather see her fate coming than worry herself sick about it in the ship's bowels. Besides, retreating would mean releasing her grip on the rail, an unthinkable notion at the moment. A couple of sailors casually strode by, laughing outright at the child's death grip. With a flush as red as her new fifth year headband, Shiori loosened her grip on the rail. After all, if she was going to be stuck on a ship for a month's duration, she was going to have to get her sea legs. That's right, she had made up her mind days ago. There was no turning back now. If she wanted to be a Yuyan, this was what she was going to have to do. At least the ship she was expected to live on was a Fire Nation battleship. Surely it would be far more stable than this wooden death trap. As the ship gave another sudden lurch, Yori's hand tightened and she sent up a heartfelt prayer to those ancestors who might be inclined to watch over a pathetic non-vendor like herself. Please give me the strength to see this through, so I can become Yuyan, so I can finally be somebody. The ancestors did not reply, but the girl didn't have much faith in such things anyway. From the very beginning, she and her brother had always been expected to take care of themselves. Not important enough for the people who had given them life to look after, not valuable enough to their town to garner protection from the element controlling bullies who had tormented them. They were children who had been seemingly destined for a life of drudgery in the Fire Lord's factories, or as sacrifices on the front lines. But Keske had changed that. He had seized a dream and followed it without question, and she was determined to follow him, even if that path was now leading her into completely unexpected territory. Shuri. There have been some concerns raised over whether or not you will be able to dampen the fire in your spirit, enough to faithfully serve your future commander as a Yuyang archer. As you know, we will not make a practice of training those who are not expected to move forward. Therefore, I have arranged a little test for you. A sudden spray of cool seawater shocked her out of her memories. A test to see if she could behave as a proper Yuyang to see if she was worthy of further training. The girl's jaw tightened almost to the point of pain. This was all Shi Yun's fault, she was sure. Although her knowledge of the history of Symmetra Island was admittedly lax, she had never heard of a trainee leaving the facilities before the end of their training. This so-called test was completely unprecedented. One hand went up to the new red headband that fit snugly across her brow. The stakes for her could not be higher. If she succeeded in pleasing this new master of hers, she would become an official fifth-year student. Master Zorin himself would oversee her archery training and catch her up to the others. Most importantly, she would be given the final exam this year instead of having to wait a year for it. The wellspring of excitement that rose forth at the idea of being that much closer to her goal plastered a goofy grin on her face every time she thought about it. Not even the unpredictable rolling of the ship's deck was enough to completely smother her enthusiasm. But great rewards meant taking great risks. If she failed, if this new commander of hers was displeased with her, or found fault with her actions for whatever reason, she would be dismissed from the training program immediately. Shiori looked down at her calloused right hand, flexing the fingers slightly. Master Zorin had left the choice of whether or not to accept this test up to her. If she had refused, she would have been sent back to the fourth years to resume her training there. The safest option had also been the most unconceivable to her. Arrows do not move backwards. Shiori straightened, her face hardening in resolve as she attempted to adjust her body to the ship's rocking movements. One month. I can tolerate anyone for a month. All I have to do is be on my best behavior. I can do this. I will succeed and I will become you, Yan. With a deep, steadying breath, she released her grip on the rail. 
Ah, I see your compatriots have already arrived. Come, Shiori. Startled, the youth followed her master's gaze out to the far side of the harbor, where a few Fire Nation battleships were anchored. One of them was almost humorously small in comparison to the others. What? But I haven't had a chance to clean up yet. The girl's hand began to brush wind-whipped errant strands of her plain brown hair back away from her face, deft fingers tucking them up into her headband and back behind her ears. She shifted her quiver onto her back and adjusted her bow, so that way it was easily obtainable. The port the ship had brought them to was bustling with activity. Ships were offloading goods at the same time as others took the chattels on board. An endless flow of products that would have been mesmerizing if Shiori had possessed the time to watch it. The dock workers moved with a drive and single-minded purpose that would have made even Shi Yun proud. With feet now accustomed to a rolling deck, the stable dock seemed anything but, as the trainee attempted to keep up with her sure-footed master. Stacks of boxes, coils of heavy rope, and even some living goat pigs had to be dodged as they wove their way around the long wooden deck. Chiori's eyes locked onto warships, curious as to which would be her future home. Distracted, she tripped over a bundle of canvas, bringing a look from Master Zorin. Blushing scarlet, the young teen scrambled to her feet and devoted her full attention to following close behind the headmaster's lithe form. Traversing the dock and later the bustling harbor town streets was a lot easier when she focused solely on the white-haired Yu Yan. The headmaster of Symmetra Island wove his way down the busy street with an ease that flabbergasted the much shorter and younger girl camped on his heels. The town lay tightly snuggled against the curvature of the harbor, docks of various sizes interlinking the two. Shiori's nose was assaulted by a multitude of new and conflicting scents, the salt of the ocean she was accustomed to, but layered on top of that were the smells of fish and baked goods, perfume and unwashed bodies, leather, dirt, and even the occasional hint of pine. Used to a nearly monochromatic society, the variety of colors astounded her as well. And then there was the cacophony of voices that drowned out all but the loudest of opportunistic sea crows. Shiori was well and truly on the verge of being overwhelmed by the time they passed the main business section of town and the street traffic thinned out. Freed from having to concentrate on shadowing her master, the young teen's mind began speculating for the umpteenth time about what her new commander would be like. Ah, here it is. Going Iro, I trust this is the best restaurant on the island, even if it is an unpresumptuous looking affair. Curious, his young ward peeked out from behind his back. The restaurant in question hardly looked as such, and was certainly pale in comparison to the grand buildings they had passed before. Wooden clapboard siding had been painted white at some point in time. Now it was weather-beaten and dull, with flakes of paint decorating the ground like dandruff. An unreadable wooden sign creaked as it swung on rusty hinges. As they came closer to the entrance, a man came stumbling out, the reek of sake so strong that Shiori's nose crinkled up in disgust. Ah, your granddaughter sure is cute! He attempted to plant a few pats on top of the young teen's head. He failed miserably, in part because of his own inebriation, in part because Shiori's training had been rather thorough when it came to avoiding close quarters combat. Come, Shiori. Face still twisted in disgust, she quickly caught up with her master. Despite its outwardly shabby appearance, the interior of the restaurant seemed well maintained. The white painted walls and open shutter windows gave the place an airy feel. The wooden floor was well worn, but swept spotlessly clean. Shiori shifted the quiver on her shoulder, making sure it wouldn't accidentally bump anyone's table as they weaved between them. The restaurant was sparsely populated. It was past noon and before dinner. Still, with her concentration focused mainly on her master's back, the Yu Yan in training didn't notice the familiar colors of her fellow countrymen until they stood before their table. A short, rotund elder man rose in greeting, an amiable smile on his face as he and Zorin exchanged bows. General Iro, it's been too long. Zorin. My old friend, you are looking well. Shiori bowed when her master did. 
It wasn't until after she had straightened that she noticed the surly-looking teen still seated on the floor. Their eyes met for the briefest of instants before Shiori shifted away. That scar. How horrible. She wanted to stare at it. She never wanted to see it again. She watched the floorboards, composing herself, her brain scarcely registering the conversation going on around her. It was so busy scolding her for averting her gaze. His eyes. His eyes are my targets. Nothing else matters. She was going to be a Yu Yan. The Yu Yan did not flinch. Not even if the visage they faced seemed to lack an ear. His eyes. They were gold, weren't they? Like the sun. She brought her gaze back up, determined to ignore the angry red skin that encompassed both the teen's left eye and a stub of ear. But it was too late. As if the burn and the shaved head didn't make the teen's features severe enough, he was now supporting a full-out scowl as he rose from the floor. He shot Shiori a death glare. Uncle, we wasted enough time here. I came here for an archer, not a child. Let's go. He brushed past her as he moved. His eyes stared off beyond as if she wasn't there at all. Shiori stood frozen. Somehow, she had failed. Failed without firing a single arrow or serving a single day. Just like that, it was over for her. All of her training, her hopes, her dreams. All of it. Prince Zuko, show your respect to Master Zorin. Please, won't you join us for some tea? I ordered some oolong. As I recall, it is your favorite. Zuko clenched his fists in an attempt to rein in his anger. A glance over his shoulder confirmed that yes, indeed, the two elders were actually going to sit there and drink tea. Why was he so surprised? Two years of traveling with his uncle and he still held out hope that drinking tea would be a euphemism for let's make polite conversation for five minutes, then leave. That's what it would mean if he were truly in charge anyways. Instead, they were going to sit there and imbibe, which could take a minimal of half an hour, if not more. His only options were to sit there and tolerate it or return to his ship and wait. Really, there was only one option. With a scowl, he returned to his cushion at the table. His uncle wordlessly poured him a cup of tea, giving him a private smile as he did so. The Yu Yan girl had already surrendered to the inevitable, kneeling on a cushion slightly behind and to the right of her master. Zuko's frown deepened. What a disappointment. When his uncle had informed him that his old friend, the headmaster of Symmetra himself, would be willing to lend him a top-ranked trainee for a month, Zuko had felt hope for the first time since Zhao's promotion. His uncle had tried to caution him, that it was only one trainee and only for a month, but in Zuko's mind, it was all he needed. Except now, looking at the slight, unimpressive girl Zorin had brought, the prince realized that in his mind, he had been picturing one of those deadly archers he had seen at General Shiloh's fortress. Those Yu Yan had exuded a lethal intensity that the teen before him distinctly lacked, and he sincerely doubted it was the absence of the face paint that made the difference. Even Zorin, who was white on top of spindly, had a gaze that reminded Zuko of a predator. The girl, well, she couldn't even look him in the eyes. He felt a brief flash of self-consciousness. After two years, he'd thought he'd be used to it. The stares, the double takes, the overly sympathetic looks, the averted eyes. Anger, his familiar friend, shooed away the unprincely feeling of insecurity. After he captured the Avatar and restored his honor, the Agni Kai scar he bore would mean nothing. And the sooner they stopped wasting time here and got on with it, the better. Yes. Ishiori. She is a fourth year on Symmetra, but her archery skills are on par with her fifth years. Zuko blinked as he realized the hawk-eyed Yu Yan had been addressing him. He gave a non-committal grunt as a response. Who cared what the girl was? She was definitely not what he had in mind. The red and black eyes stared at him, through him, until Zuko felt a cold prick of discomfort between his shoulder blades. Perhaps a demonstration of her skills is in order. The prince shrugged. It wasn't going to make a difference anyway. He gazed out the open window, across the street, and out into the harbor. There. The fish boat out there. The one unloading its catch. Put an arrow into its mast. Shiori followed the prince's gaze to her proposed target. 
She frowned. What an insult. Didn't the Prince of the Fire Nation know the capabilities of its finest archers? Of course, Shiori was still a bit overwhelmed to discover that her temporary commander was Prince Zuko himself. She partially suspected it to all be a part of an elaborate ruse. He looked nothing like the handsome portrait of the Fire Lord that hung in the classrooms at Sumatra Island. And who would dare burn the face of a prince? Furthermore, his uncle's size and form appeared to be the exact opposite of a great general to her. But she could see no reason for the headmaster to go so far. It was only her temperament that supposedly needed testing, not her skills of observation. In the end, the identity of her new commander didn't matter a lick. She was a weapon, she reminded herself, and weapons didn't care who wielded them. Still, the proposed target was an insult. At around a hundred yards, it was easily in range of her recurve bow, and the mast was a big target, not challenging at all. Stupid boy. She envisioned a month of shooting inappropriately easy targets, all at the whim of a royal brat who probably never had to work for anything in his whole life. Chirk. Uh, perhaps, Prince Zuko, you're not familiar with the skills of a Yuya. She only may still be a trainee, but she is one of an elite few who has made it to the end of our program. Zorn's words were polite and non-confrontational. The tone he directed at his student, however, rang with a power of authority. Through the eye of a fish, Shiori, as it falls. The teenaged girl ducked her head in a short bow. She shifted her position on her cushion so that she knelt fully facing the open window. Reddish-brown eyes narrowed as a large nut full of fish was slowly hoisted out of the vessel's hold. Several potential targets presented themselves, fish that were hanging precariously as the bulging net swayed back and forth. Her muscles involuntarily stiffened, but she refused to reach for her bow. She had been given a challenge. She was representing the skills of the Yuyan, and this was her one and only opportunity to impress the prince. It's just another shot. All eyes were on the net as it swung out over the rail. There! In a moment that she had practiced over a thousand times before, the young Yuyan had her bow up and loaded in less than a blink of an eye. The white fletched arrows streaked across the water just as the fish fell free from the net. Shiori turned back to the table as the other occupants stared at the result. Not one, but two arrows pinned the fish to the hull of the ship. At this distance, no one but Zorin could tell it was through the eye of the fish, although it was obvious that the fish was hanging right side up. Shiori turned back to the table as the other occupants stared at the results. Not one, but two arrows pinned the fish to the hull of the ship. At this distance, no one but Zorin could tell that it was through the eye of the fish, although it was obvious to all that the fish was hanging right side up. However, everyone could see that the second arrow had split the first. As a few startled shouts arose from the harbor, Shiori gave the obviously surprised prince a small, satisfied smirk. Ha! Who is a child now? But then she caught Headmaster Zorn giving her a disapproving look. She shriveled under his red-rimmed eyes, realizing that once again she had succeeded as an archer, but failed as a Yuyan. <clears throat> so, I can have her for a month then? Yes, Prince Zuko. One month. Shiori will follow your orders as you give them, and your uncle will report her progress back to me. I ask that you remember that she is committed to a strict training schedule, and that you will not interfere with her training unless you have need of her services. He turned the full effect of his bullseye's orbs onto his student. Shiori, you understand what is expected of you. I want you to meditate on the true nature of a Yuyan archer during your journey with Prince Zuko. Zorin's gaze softened. He looked at the earnest girl. Even now he could see the fire dancing in her eyes. How ironic that she had been born with the spirit of a firebender, but not the abilities of one. May the sun spirit guide you. The choice. Final Exam was written by Magnus Ray. Avatar The Last Airbender is owned by Nickelodeon, Michael Dante DiMartino, and Brian Konietzko. The narrator for this story is Samantha White. The voice of Iroh is Jake Mate. The voice of Zuko is Decode. The voice of Shiori is Drew Hill. The voice of Zorin is Gendiota COG. Additional voices are provided by Gendiota COG. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.